are the reasons for the manor being built here in Martham? Well, I think there's two main reasons. The first uh, reason being that over the back of the site, there's some very strong freshwater springs. So there's a continuous supply of, of fresh water. Very important in that most of the other water around here was salt water. Behind you, there's a big um, stretch of marshland now, which is, is green. But originally, a thousand years ago, that would have all have been a, a salt water estuary, probably tidal mudflats at low tide. Um, but a high tide, certainly navigable to, to fairly large boats, which would have been able to come into here. Uh, they'd have been able to, to bring goods in, take goods out. Uh, we found evidence, again behind you, over in that direction, we found evidence for um, boat building activities and a man-made cut. Uh, the Vikings would certainly have, have come up here in the years immediately before the manor was built. And um, there was still a threat of invasion right through until the, the end of the 1500s. So building a fortified manor on this location would have been very important. This is a rather, rather beautifully crafted Bronze Age arrowhead, which we found towards the back of the site. Um, it's barbed. You see these, these two points here? They would have been very, very sharp. And uh, that dates it um, to four, four and a half thousand years old. Uh, the, the, the arrowheads before it were more of a leaf shape, so you, you can date them quite easily. Uh, how was it made? Well, if you turn it over, that's right, you'll see that across here there's a flat face. That would have been struck off with another stone from a piece of flint, and then it would have held it and used a very fine point of a deer antler just to ping away the edge. And that could make uh, the blade, I'm told, up to 200 times sharper than a steel blade. So the barbed bit on the side, would that have made it um, go in quicker? It, what it tended to do was do more damage. It would go in uh, to the animal, and uh, it wouldn't be able to be pulled back out again. So it's like a hook, or like a pair of hooks. And originally the shaft of the arrowhead would have come in between them, and it would probably have been glued on with a pine resin, and possibly even bound up with something like uh, twine made from, from nettles, which can be incredibly strong. Uh, it was also it was found within three or four feet of uh, a pair of wild boar tusks. So it may have actually been used to hunt that wild boar, which at that period would have been quite a common animal around here. Uh, so are we actually standing on mud or what is this? Well, you'll notice that we are standing on a lot of mud, but also scattered am amongst the mud, there's lots of these large flints. In fact, some of them very large. Now what it seems is that, um, as was common with a lot of medieval manor houses, uh, one edge of the moat, one side of the moat, was formed by a pond, which would supply fish to the manor and also part of the defence and part of the gardens. And then the wall of the manor house would come straight down into the pond. Uh, at some point, the manor house has collapsed and one entire wall has fallen over into the pond. Uh, over towards the, the little island over here, uh, we found large sections of, of stone mullion windows. And then all the way across the base of the pond and cutting back under this mud, we've got loads and loads of these faced flints. They're faced on one side, which would have been on the outside of the wall like that, and they're covered with mortar at the back where they were, where they were mortared into the wall. Where do you find all the pottery? Well, stuff like this, which is um, sort of post-medieval salt glaze wave, probably from about the time of the English Civil War, we find literally all over the site. It's, it's an everyday item which would have got broken and, and just thrown away as, as rubbish. So it's so all over the place. And uh, what can you tell me about the stone? Well, the stone probably tells us more about the house than anything. Um, this is being the, uh, the medieval manor house. This stone over here, for instance, is a window sill. And this is a, 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 a groove which took the glass, the leaded windows. This stone is a mullion which fitted to it, and they stood in like this. And then the glass came into here, with holes drilled through it to take bars which attached to the window to stop the window flopping about. This would also, this would probably have been quite tall, probably four or five feet tall, maybe even six feet tall and uh, would then have a window head similar to this and give you a big square stone mullion window. 
This piece is a classic piece of a Gothic window. It's the branch from the, from the top centre of a Gothic window. Uh, like the rest of this stone, it's, uh, it's all in one particular style, which is known as English Decorated Gothic, which dates the house very precisely. Uh, it tells us that um, the house was built some sometime between around about 1300 when this style came in. The style abruptly finished in 1349 with the, uh, the Black Death. Virtually everybody who was working on building projects died, so um, uh, the, the building work didn't restart for quite a few years afterwards, and when it did it started in a completely different style. This stone tells us about the scale of the building, the thickness of the walls, and the way it was decorated. Uh, with the, the, the glazing bar here, and one edge of the wall being here, this being from the side of a window. If you project that over here, it would give you around about a two and a half foot thick flint wall, which is a fairly substantial wall, very heavy. But also, if you look over here, you'll see that there's a great number of different coats of uh, white lime wash been applied, which would have given you a white internal, like a white emulsion finish today. And underneath that, you can see a very bright blue cobalt, which is a classic medieval colour and was undoubtedly the, uh, the original colour that this particular room would have been painted, which tells us that this face of the stone was inside the house, and this piece, which looks quite weathered, was outside the house.